believe it in my friend. Yeah. Seen here inspecting the skeletons of many sunken barges. When the new cut was engineered in ninth, at the turn of the century, Milethorne Bight and the old lock was bypassed to improve the navigable river Don. The formation of the Strawberry Island Boat Club stemmed from the aforementioned association. The formation of the Strawberry Island Boat Club stemmed from the aforementioned association. A tremendous enthusiasm was created within the newly formed club by clearing the river of sunken barges. The holes in every instance were filled with silt and a vast network of weed root spreading like a carpet along the banks of Strawberry Island. In the beginning, all the work was achieved by handwork and the brute strength of the stalwart members of the club. The National Coal Board generously loaned an air compressor. An agricultural tractor was kindly lent by one of the many generous vice presidents of the club to ease the load of the handwork. Although the club was financially sound, the available money was earmarked for essential building materials.
refreshment and conviviality was a frequent sight. After a bout of prolonged work, a welcome rest, and a lively discussion for planning the next move. One of the old huts stood in the way of the new bridge access, and manual labor and winch were the only tools available. Once again, the tractor, when available, played easily with the task, driven by a lady club member. The men, stripped to the waist on a hot summer's day, were relieved to see the manual task helped by the arrival of the tractor. covered with thick beds of nettles and thistles. And most of the trees had a natural leaning towards the water, making it difficult to clear the area for moorings. Most of this work was again tackled manually with small hand tools and pure human energy. barge olive coming into moor near the old lock was lent to the club for a temporary clubhouse by one of its members. The barge, powered by its own diesel engine, was skillfully converted from its original purpose to that of a comfortable lounge bar. Bill Kelly shook hands with its owner, greeting the first arrival, which was to be used as the boat's, boat club's temporary headquarters. <laughs> Techniques were quickly developed by members who were inexperienced in the problems of clearing rivers. Many of these developed methods were unusual but highly effective. Many of these developed methods were unusually very effective.
Meanwhile, the building materials for the new bridge have arrived on site. James looks interestedly in the barrow load of old debris from the river, and especially this old barge lamp. was used to position a steel cable, enabling areas of weed to be cleared by hauling the massive weight with a power winch. of the water as the winch gradually tugs at the embedded keel of an old sunken horse-drawn barge. Much of the timber used in these barges was found to be pitch pine, which was the original piling material used for building on saturated ground. Local Gomont Circuits Manager, Mr. Colin Magison, assisted greatly with the publicity of the boat club by creating a record for the number of bathing beauties that could be squeezed into an inflatable dinghy without sinking. The event has been recorded in the Guinness Book of Records and was publicized by the local press, ITV, Daily Mail and the Daily Express.
after the banks were cleared and cleaned, the first temporary moorings were made by using 45 gallon steel drums. electric power point and a quayside floodlight was installed on the island to light the way for planning meetings held on Barge Olive during winter months. temporary licensed headquarters of the club had been well fitted out by its owner with well stocked bar facilities and other conveniences. Natural light had been given into the lounge during the barge's previous conversion. Committee meetings were held at regular intervals during the evening where lively discussion was promoted by the club's commodore, Mr. John Martin, and recorded by the honorary secretary, Mr. Bill Kelly. new bridge was started made from stone and concrete bearing pads with steel girder spans and steel plate decking. The old wooden bridge was not sufficiently robust to accommodate the heavy tackle required for later development and ultimately the weight of seagoing vessels that will be launched from the second slipway into the deeper water further up Strawberry Island. The plane was constructed using reject reinforced concrete beams, which has given a generous area of concrete underwater to facilitate good access for boat trailers. The commencement of the permanent clubhouse began from the structure of a building contractor's timber office block. hurriedly clad in fireproof materials, ready for the official opening of the marina by the club's president, the Earl of Scarborough. The ceremony was attended by the Mayor of Doncaster, Councillor Clark. 
Lord Scarborough, accompanied by Lady Scarborough and the Commodore, Mr. John Martin, examine the flag point in the center of the car park. The band was ready to play before the mayor of Cairo arrived. The Commodore greets the mayor and welcomed him to the opening ceremony. Scarborough addressed the meeting and declared he would give the club every possible support, which received enthusiastic applause. Lady Scarborough was presented with a bouquet of flowers and spoke with many members of the boat club. requested to officially open the first slipway, which was secured by a chain and lock. The officials of the opening ceremony boarded the barge Olive and signed the club book. Doncaster is a member of the Royal Navy Club. One year later, the banks are cleared, the trees cut back and a colourful vista of busy boats is apparent. The club activity has gathered momentum with many more members swelling the ranks of the boat club. Human endeavour is being rewarded. Flotilla from Strawberry Island is the Barge Olive, moving from the Bight into the River Don, followed by the cruiser My Way.
cruise on my way sporting a large, happy and relaxed crew. Large olive flies the club pennant, followed by many other boats. This picture has portrayed the beginning of Strawberry Island. This picture has portrayed the beginning of Strawberry Island Boat Club, revealing the evidence of initial success and bears witness to the ever-growing demand for spending leisure time in boats. Boredom cannot thrive for long on Strawberry Island, and the enthusiasm cannot be stemmed.